In the previous video, we looked at configuring data stores based on NFS version 4.1. In this video, we are going to take a look at configuring an iSCSI storage array. We have a easy to use storage array in place and uh, I will show you how we create LUNs and uh, iSCSI targets and uh, what it looks like on the other side on the ESXi side. We will uh, look at configuring uh, VM kernels for uh, iSCSI uh, using the vSphere web client and then we will look at multi-pathing uh, with iSCSI. Now right from the beginning I actually have set up uh, multi-pathing with uh, iSCSI so you will see a lot of paths up there but then I will go through the process I actually went through creating various entities on iSCSI storage array side as well as on the VM kernel side for that to actually uh, work. So with that let's take a look at our iSCSI storage array and see what we have there and then we will shift over to the web client. So now I'm in my Synology storage manager and uh, we're looking at uh, the disk group tab. What I have is a disk group total capacity of uh, 3.63 terabytes made up of two disks each of 1.82 terabytes so it's a, it's a logical entity. On top of that I have built a volume which is called volume 1 and it has a total capacity of 3.57 out of which 57 gigabytes has been used because I've used a thin uh, provisioning throughout. So first comes the disk group takes the physical disks and puts them together into a physical disk group and then the volume logical volume is built on top of that. Uh, this, I am not using any kind of a RAID so this is a JBOD and uh, it's based on that disk group 1. So on top of this volume I have iSCSI LUNs and iSCSI targets. Let's look at iSCSI LUNs. So I have LUN1, LUN2, LUN PACT1 and LUN PACT10 and that is not mapped to any iSCSI target. Let me uh, remove this LUN because I'd like to show you the actual process of creating a LUN. So it's as easy as this to remove that LUN. So before we go there it's LUN1 is mapped to target 1, LUN2 is mapped to target 2, LUN PACT1 which is of 1 gig capacity is mapped to target 3. So there are 3 targets, 3 LUNs, 1 to 1 mapping. Let's look at iSCSI target. Target 1 as you can see has this uh, IQN with a dot name. Target 2 has dot name 1 and target 3 has dot name 2. Target 1 has many different IP connections because uh, they are coming in through two NICs and which is which has which have two IP addresses and then on the VMware side I have four NICs which are connected as well. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So four NICs on my host, two NICs on my storage array means there are eight paths that I can come in into that uh, target and that's exactly what we see and uh, these are all uh, VM kernel um, addresses okay same thing for uh, target 2 and target 3 has only one because that's the way I have actually configured it at this point in time okay let's look at uh, target 3 default privileges are read write uh, target 2 we see in terms of masking that there is a certain initiator with this IQN for which there is no access this is uh, an old ESXi host that I had in place. So currently our default privileges are read write for our 201 host uh, slash 16 uh, subnet basically. So we have a uh, target uh, one there and that's also connected eight times simply because four NICs on one side, two NICs on the other side gives us eight different paths coming in into the targets. Okay, so let's create a nice SCSI LUN. And again, I'm, I'm showing this to you on my Synology. Very often, when we work in the v, in the vSphere environment, we are kind of constrained to just uh, being allowed to do vSphere administration and sometimes we are not really aware of what happens on the storage side. We're just given a LUN. So just want to show you that it's actually relatively easy. Of course, the process differs depending on you know what, what vendor it is, but it conceptually it's, it's very straightforward. So in this case, I create a LUN. There we go. It's a regular file, no RAID. I'm, I'm going to give it a name. It'll be LUN PACT10. I reused that before. It's going to be located on that logical volume. I'm going to use thin provisioning. I could have selected no, have had thick uh, provisioning. 
the capacity is going to be uh, 10 uh, gigabytes and I will create a new iSCSI target. I could have mapped it to an existing iSCSI target, but uh, it's just easier for me to think in terms of one LUN to one uh, target. Now again, different storage arrays do this uh, differently, but uh, usually the most uh, basic way to do it is by uh, having, you know, one LUN to one uh, target. I click on next. I'm not going to enable any CHAP authentication or mutual CHAP. It simply doesn't make any sense to me in a secure physical data center environment. So I click on next and we are going to create a new LUN, LUN pack 10 of 10 gig capacity, thin provision and a new target 4 will be uh, created which will have an uh, IQN of dot name 3 because the names start with dot name, dot name 1, dot name 2 and dot name 3 for this Synology device. So I click apply and it will create my targets as well as my LUN pack 10 has been created. It's uh, target 4 and it's uh, ready to go. So with this we are going to move now to our web client to see what things look like there on that side for the iSCSI. So we are back in the vSphere web client. I'm looking at my host 0 0.201 looking at networking and I'm looking at the separate standard switch that I created that I'm using for uh, iSCSI uh, activities. It's usually a good practice uh, but in a normal environment you'd probably use the distributed switch because you would have you know multiple clusters and, uh, and, and so on that you would have in place. So for our purposes the uh, standard switch is uh, actually uh, sufficient. So let's see what we have here. This switch as you can see has uh, four physical adapters so ranging from VM NIC 2, 3, 4 and 5. And uh, these four adapters are connected to through a switch and they go out to a storage array that has two NICs. So we get a total of four multiplied by two, which is basically eight paths in, in, into our targets. Okay. iSCSI, uh, as you know, uses a uh, VM kernel. So let's look at see what I have uh, here. I have many VM kernels. So let's look at VMK1. It has an address of 172.2092.1 and it's in my initial uh, port group. And then I have IP addresses for those kernels that go up from 204 to 203 to 202. So basically from 90.201 through 90.204. Now let's examine the first port group. So we look at this uh, port group and we click on edit. And the most important one is actually teaming and failover because there's a certain way in which these physical NICs have to be associated with these uh, VM kernels that are going to be used for iSCSI. And basically what it is is that out of the whole switch I can only use one adapter at a time for iSCSI and that is what gives me multipathing with iSCSI. So for this port group iSCSI PG port group I have one active adapter VM NIC 5 and all the others have been moved to unused. They cannot be at standby. This is a key feature and that obviously is done by uh, using the uh, failover order and uh, override. So I'm going to cancel all of this. Let's look at this VM kernel. Let's look at the port group actually and edit the other port group and look at the teaming and failover for the VM kernel there. You can see that the active adapter is a different one. In the prior one it was VM NIC 5. Now I'm using VM NIC 2 for this and VM NIC 5 for this is uh, basically unused. So that's the pattern that must be in place before the uh, software adapter, the iSCSI software adapter will actually uh, find a VM kernel with which is compliant for iSCSI. To be compliant with iSCSI you need to have that capability of making sure that it is basically connected to only one physical NIC and uh, that can be verified also in this way. So when I click on this I'm connected to VM NIC 4 only. When I click on this, I'm connected to VM NIC 3 only. Okay, so that's how this is done. And, and what I did was, in my case, was to uh, start with the uh, iSCSI uh, port group and uh, one VM kernel at a time. I kept adding 90.201, 90.202, 90.203 until I ended up with 92.04. And I just kept using one other NIC that has not been uh, used. I create yet another. VM kernel of fifth one, but I only have four uh, physical adapters. I could reuse a physical adapter, but that is that gives me no no extra redundancy uh, capability, so it makes absolutely no sense. But the process of uh, creating the VM kernel adapters you are all familiar with. Uh, this is an advanced course, 
so i'm i'm making that uh, assumption it's uh, you know you basically add you know your physical kernel adapters so you add your host uh, networking vm kernel adapter you hit uh, next all right and i'm using a standard switch i use my v switch 1 click on next and uh, basically that's where you specify the labels and stuff like that and uh, you don't need to check any of these services here uh, uh, and then uh, click next and you're off and running okay so that takes care of it from the networking side uh, the key here is that uh, the vm kernels there are multiple vm kernels here but each of those vm kernels only uh, is uh, connected to one active uh, physical adapter and that's how the uh, the uh, multipathing of iSCSI is done so in our case uh, we, are, we are able to do quite a lot of uh, multipathing because we have uh, two NICs on our storage array and we have uh, four NICs on our ESXi host. Let's now uh, switch to storage and uh, we look at storage ad uh, adapters. There, there are two storage adapters. I'm sure you know how to uh, instantiate the iSCSI software adapter. You can only have one of these at a time. I've already done that on this uh, host. So when I look at this software adapter, I have these devices. You can see there are three devices. If you remember when we looked at our LUNs, there were two LUNs, LUN 1 and LUN 2, each of 200 gig and a third LUN of, of 1 gig. And uh, we did create a fourth LUN, but I don't see the fourth LUN here. Uh, it is uh, because what we have to do is to rescan. So now the scan is complete and I have my 10 gig device attached. So now we have the four, 200, 200, 1, and uh, 10. We can take a very quick look at our storage devices here. So these are the individual uh, devices. They are attached. Click on this one. It gives me all the information that we've seen before when we looked at our uh, storage from the command line. We edited the multipathing and uh, everything else uh, earlier as well. So we saw how, how all that actually did work. So uh, that's basically it with uh, I, I SCSI. The, uh, a uh, multipathing can be uh, changed as we have seen here with the uh, editing uh, multipathing for that uh, device uh, right now it's mru and there's only only one one active io path uh, to it it's not much you can do there you can look at the uh, uh, storage ad uh, adapter you're familiar with all these other options of scanning for st uh, storage and so on uh, so you have that uh, the SCSI adapter has uh, all these uh, targets and there are 18 paths there are four devices uh, we can look at the paths uh, for that uh, adapter. So this is all those paths. We've looked at uh, runtime names before uh, as well when we were doing the uh, PSA, the uh, Pluggable Storage Architecture, which is uh, essentially your HBA name, channel, target, and, and your LUNs. And uh, you can see that uh, there are uh, connections to you know different IP addresses. There are two IP addresses basically that we have in place here. 90.1 and 90.2. Uh, the iSCSI port, as you know, is uh, 3260. So nothing uh, much uh, here to add to uh, iSCSI. We can go to the command line, uh, take a look at some of the iSCSI uh, namespace uh, possibilities that uh, exist as well. So we are back again in uh, 192.168.0.201. When I when you enter the command ESXCLI and the namespace iSCSI. These are the options that you get. You can uh, look at the adapter, the network portal, physical network portal. This basically is the VM kernel NIC. These are logical constructs from the iSCSI uh, specification that, that have been converted over and kind of translated over into vSphere. There's not much that one actually wants to uh, do here. Uh, we can look at the iSCSI uh, adapter uh, list, I would assume. Adapter list. And uh, there's just that one adapter with the iSCSI uh, VMK uh, driver and, and the UID which we uh, saw before. For ESXCLI iSCSI session list. And uh, we have all these sessions which we can pipe to more. So this is what we uh, see uh, when we go up into the uh, storage array as well. You saw the various connections to the various targets. So that's all that is. Really, in, in my view, in this ESX uh, CLI I SCSI 
namespace there's not much uh, that is required at least from the software iSCSI uh, perspective the IBFT boot is uh, uh, interesting because uh, sometimes we need to load the IBFT uh, boot table if we are uh, booting off an iSCSI disk which I'm not I'm booting off a, a local uh, internal disk but it would be interesting to see what those options are IBFT boot we can get uh, the details and there are no boot tables because we really haven't uh, set up any of this IBFT specification uh, anywhere actually my NICs uh, do support IBFT but I'm not doing a boot from iSCSI so it's not uh, relevant to me at this point in time. the iSCSI uh, plugin and uh, we can list the iSCSI list again there's not going to be uh, very much there there's uh, a VMware plugin and uh, there's a QLogic plugin again uh, not really relevant um, iSCSI uh, works very very nicely it's very fast multi patting is very easy to set up as we've seen we saw how to do the iSCSI configurations both on the host array host side as well as the uh, uh, array side uh, as well so having looked uh, extensively at uh, iSCSI and uh, looked at uh, the uh, configuration both on the storage array side in terms of targets and LUNs uh, as well as uh, on the host side in terms of being able to provide multipathing. Uh, we looked at the, at how uh, we need to be sure the VM kernels to be used for iSCSI need to be made compliant and that's done by having only one active adapter and all the other adapters in unused mode. In the next video we will look at uh, LUN masking uh, we look at the storage array and the ESXi side as well. I look forward to seeing you there.